guys. Uh, it's ever seen here, and this is going to be kind of my atlas plans for 3.24. They finally updated the tree in the PoE planner, so we can see like you know a real representation. Uh, and you know, I looked over this tree a little bit. Uh, there's some things I like, things I don't like. Um, the things I like are that league mechanics are a lot easier to spawn now. Like harvest chance here, you can get up to 70% just on this cluster. You can get up to 60% for expedition just on one cluster. Um, so you're going to be seeing league mechanics a lot more often, and we can use less points. Uh, like, you know, since we can go into June and get chance there, we don't have to use all hands. We don't have to use stream of consciousness, even though that was like a big node for SSF. Um, yeah, I don't like that they removed that, and I also don't like that they removed Wandering Path up here because Wandering Path was like the bread and butter for SSF, like map sustain and being able to complete your atlas, you know, fairly easy. But nonetheless like pretty good atlas uh looking at it so far i'm gonna path you know straight through betrayal this is a no-brainer in my opinion like essence is okay if you want to go essence i i know they nerfed it and i just feel like the amount of essences that you're gonna get out of your maps is not gonna compare to the amount of like unveiled gear and just straight up gear you're gonna get from betrayal like once you can get into all these nodes you're going to have like june in every single map so that's a lot of you know betrayal gear that i'm not gonna pass up so you know i'm gonna go straight up through this adjacent map drop chance you want to make sure you have a decent amount of these nodes because you know we're in ssf and we need to be able to drop connecting maps uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and grab the higher tier map chance, shaping the mountains, because I do want to drop a little bit of, you know, maps above the tier I'm currently farming in. It's just going to help for getting multiple maps, I guess. Like if I'm farming a map and I have all the adjacent connected maps, then it's really like not beneficial for me to have the adjacent map drop chance because I can't complete my atlas anymore. So I want the higher tier. I'm going to grab this little snippet of higher tier to begin. And then I am personally going to go all the way down and grab all these betrayal nodes. Because I'm going to have zero gear once I get in the maps. And I want to start farming betrayal and getting a ton of gear. So after I grab these betrayal nodes, I'm going to go up. And I'm going to go grab a few more adjacent. So we have a decent adjacent drop chance already. And then I'm going to go right into the Kirak nodes, which, you know, gives you scouting reports. These scouting reports are super beneficial because we can refresh Kirak and it's just easier to find maps that you haven't completed. And you can run the map and then, you know, you can drop adjacent maps that are connected to that map if you don't have any discovered. So Kirak is like a must-have for SSF, in my opinion. So the gain one additional mission each day is going to be really good for League Start 2 because we're just going to get multiple missions. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and I'm going to grab this gateway and then I'm going to go right over here and then I'm going to grab all these higher tier map chances and we're good. So some people might be like, well, why would you take the gateway, which is one, two, three points, if you can just go one, two, three points and then be at the same area. So I don't want to do that because I can actually save points this way by... I'm going to go this way after. And so I already have this one point. So technically I'm saving one point because later on I may go essence. It just depends on how I feel about my gear and everything. Um, but I also, this is big for league start in my opinion. I really like blight on league start. So we're going to grab this blight cluster. It's going to help us a lot because we're going to get a decent oil base just off of this. We're getting 36% chance, 76% chance to contain a Blight. So you're going to see Blight almost every map, maybe every other map. So you're going to be getting oils. It's going to be perfect. You're going to be getting lots of XP. And overall, it's just really good to do Blight in the beginning. You might even get some Blighted maps, which you can run, and then get some, you know, Bubblegum Currency, which is always nice in SSF. You really want that Bubblegum Currency kind of effect where you're getting multiple currencies of different forms. And then, you know, once I grab these Blight nodes, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to grab these Expedition nodes. And the reason why I do the Blight first and I do the Expedition after is because I just want to do Blight to get oils as quickly as possible. Maybe get a couple Blighted maps, level up my character a bit. And then I want to get straight into Expedition because this we're going to see this basically every single map. Uh, it's 60% chance, so, you know, every other map. 
and then I'm gonna go where I was taking this gateway. So this is a nice thing about the gateway is I kind of split my pathing. Like I didn't just go here, here, and then now I have no nodes here and like no nodes here to connect to. So here I'm actually gonna go over because I have this connecting node and this connecting path where I'm gonna go over here, grab scarab drop chance. These are just travel nodes. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna grab extreme archeology. span So for SSF, this can brick or make a map sort of thing like this might brick and I might not be able to do the expedition counter in the map encounter in the map but I really don't care if you know like I'm seeing expedition a lot more frequently and if I have to skip it it's not a big deal because I have things like blight and betrayal to do in my maps so I'm not really too concerned and expedition doesn't really get great for SSF until you're really like getting a lot of rog artifacts or you know you're doing the like level 90 trick where you can get i86 i84 bases from uh the vendors but i also want to go this way because i'm going to go over to these betrayal nodes uh because this is now a decent cluster and this gives us in total 76 i believe or no sorry that was the blight um they don't actually calculate it full here but uh, 8 times 8, 64, and then 10 times 2, 20. So we're getting 84% chance for betrayal in a map. This is going to be huge for SSF. Like, now we don't have to rely on all hands maybe giving us one of the four. We can just straight up force June in the map. So this is actually really good. The only thing that sucks is they removed, like, the Verici, uh White Socket Craft. They removed, like, the Hillock Quality, um... But, you know, I, I still think Betrayal is going to be good because it's going to give us lots of little items that we need. So, yeah, from there, I I have higher tier map chance, and that's great. Um, but they also moved Shaping the World, which it used to be up here in this cluster where Scarabs are. But now it's actually right next to the Kyrick nodes, which is at like a quality of life for if you're pathing to Kyrick, you might as well grab these nodes. And you can take them sooner if you'd like. I just don't think it's going to be super impactful. And I would rather force leagues into my maps first before I really worry about maps and map sustain. Because I can stay in lower tier maps for a little bit. And I'm going to be playing hardcore. So I probably should anyway, right? Like I don't want to progress too quickly um, if my build can't handle it. So, you know, priority for me is I want gear, gear, gear. Like these all are gear nodes. And then expedition is just to start doing them. Uh, just to start getting a little bit of artifacts and then blight you know i need oils for my annoyance so it's a no-brainer to take this cluster but from here on out guys like we're only you know probably halfway through yellow maps uh, i'm not exactly sure it might be like early red but i think early red is like 90 points so you know we're like in yellow maps and we've got a decent atlas so far we're doing multiple league mechanics so from here on out the only thing that I would take next in an SSF environment are these harvest nodes because harvest is going to be in almost every single map if you can just look at the amount of chance you get. Um, where is harvest? I mean, I can just count it. It's 30, 15, so 45, 60, 70% 70 chance to contain a harvest. Like, this is an insane buff to harvest. So, you know, with this, we can actually path to these other harvest nodes, which are on our way in our pathing. Um, it's really up to you. I'm probably just going to force harvest and leave it default for a bit and work on some other things. Uh, things I'm thinking of working on are going, you know, up through this way so I can take advantage of this essence node if I need to. I'm going to go up this way, grab, you know, this cluster, go into this expedition cluster for more logbooks. I think logbooks early on in the league are going to, you know, help out a lot. Uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd prefer running logbooks to maps anyway because you get the two yin currency, which, you know, currency is going to be another, like, hard thing to get in SSF this league. So it's things like Expedition, Sanctum. Those are going to be huge. So that's kind of why I want to run, like, a totem build for uh, this league is because I really want to farm Sanctum. But after this is kind of a long path, um, this is like kind of your end of yellow map sort of pathing. And then, like, since I'm already at these betrayal nodes, I want to go up and I want to grab the expedition nodes for, you know, Danig and Tuyin. So this is going to force them into my maps a lot easier. And I'm hopefully going to be chaining logbooks with the Danig refresh. So that's the hope anyway. But 
chaining logbooks is like getting lucky and uh you know i don't know it's a it's a league of nerfs so i don't know how lucky we're going to be so now since i'm using extreme archaeology and i kind of forgot to mention that i'm not going to path into these nodes until i get rid of this so you know i need one orb of unmaking to do this change and take these nodes so i would actually take these nodes first before i would take you know any of these all this uh take any of this i mean maybe rush for logbook chance because it's good but this one's gonna make it so you can actually choose and pick your expeditions which i like being able to just mindlessly do them but you know it obviously breaks uh bricks some of your expeditions so you want to definitely be choosing your own expeditions and you get the extra uh remnants which is huge and they can have an additional suffix which is also huge an expedition is going to be kind of a way that we farm a lot of gear alongside betrayal we're going to want to be getting you know rog uh artifacts to maybe craft boots and shields and whatever else he's good at crafting he can do some decent helmets uh but you know i want this too because uh expedition can farm fracture gear fairly like easily but yeah guys i hope you enjoyed the little breakdown for ssf i mean i don't see a lot of people doing ssf videos on youtube and especially hardcore solo self found um i know basically every league it's kind of a no-brainer to do essence but with this nerf man i just i don't trust it this time i'm gonna trust my instincts i'm gonna go for the blight I'm going to go for the Betrayal and the Expedition and a little bit of Harvest so I can make my own decent gear. And then, of course, you know, this League, uh, Necropolis League, there's nodes for it on the tree as well, which, you know, I I might do, like, the unique one up here. Uh, this one, have increased chance to have unique item crafting outcomes, which I don't really know if that means unique items or if that just means item crafting outcomes so i don't know how that's gonna work but yeah guys that's basically it i'm curious to hear anybody else's opinions on uh, like a hardcore solo self found start what you guys are doing just let me know in the comments because this is not like i'm a guru and i know everything this is just kind of based on what i know about the game i'm gonna go this route and cover kind of all my bases at once which might not be for everybody but that's kind of i would rather be well-rounded and close to things that i can actually go to instead of just being stuck on one side of the tree and not being able to grab anything over here um but yeah thanks for watching guys catch you later